I chose to study medicine because of my own experience with a very serious illness as a child. I almost died. The doctor who came out to the house uh, told my parents that he didn't expect me to live uh, out the week, he said. But he t also took the time to show them what to do to give me the best chance of living. And they must have done a great job because I survived. So my experience here in Atlanta, including going to jail as a part of the student movement and going to prison on one occasion, uh, had a lot to do with my development and my uh, attitude toward medicine and toward the civil rights movement. In many of my classes, I was the only black student. And, uh, and so there were occasions in which I had to uh, do things that other people were not concerned about, like walking out on the rotation when I saw the way they were treating black women. No sheet, nothing, no privacy. And they said we were going to learn to do the pelvic exam. And I walked out because I thought it was, it was totally inhumane. I had an opportunity to work with leaders at the institution because I thought there ought to be more people than myself that could be called upon to step in a leadership role like that. So I, I decided that maybe the, st the strategy for developing leaders is, was something that I should invest more thought and time in. And so as a result of that, we started the uh, Satchi Health Leadership Institute. I certainly think Dr. Dawes, uh, who is the director now, is on the right track because he's looked at public health from the standpoint of the politics and his latest book is uh, The Political Determinants of Health. Our vision at uh, the Satcher Health Leadership Institute is to become the leading transformative force for health equity. And our mission is to create systemic change at the intersection of equity and policies. We are moving the nation away from just looking at disparities in health status and healthcare to actually moving further upstream to the determinants of health, the drivers of health inequities in America and beyond. Right now, we are working on several projects to mitigate the impact of COVID-19 on vulnerable populations. We take an intersectional approach. So we are looking at it um, from the lens of how does COVID impact racial and ethnic minority communities, uh, people with disabilities, LGBTQ individuals, uh, women, children, veterans. And we are working, harnessing that power of collaboration with partners across the United States, in the U.S. territories, in tribal nations, to effect the changes that are necessary to move the nation further upstream and to move that needle of health equity to a degree that we have not been able to before. Creating a health equity tracker with Google.org, Gilead Sciences, CDC Foundation for all of these vulnerable populations so that they stand a fair chance to not only survive this pandemic, but thrive moving forward. If we really do not embrace an equity, an inclusive approach, well, it will continue to disadvantage our country, both economically and in terms of national security. And so these are things that we are thinking about moving forward and trying to address in concert with policymakers, with community leaders, with researchers and others so that we get it right this time around. We can't afford to continue ignoring the issues of health inequities in America and beyond.